Hey everyone, welcome to Singularity Computers Modding, episode 5. This is going to be an acrylic polishing guide. I've been wanting to do this for a while, at last I have the perfect component to polish, the perfect opportunity. Acrylic polishing is a great thing to know for modding because it might be something as simple as polishing the edges of a custom side panel window or beveling the edges or corners of the side panel window if you're installing on the outside of your side panel which always looks great or you might be building something from acrylic. It could be anything from a custom reservoir. You know, I've built little tube mounts to reinforce a water cooling loop from acrylic. You know, you can shape acrylic and carve it like wood with coarse sandpaper or a file or a rasp, you know, all by hand. That's one of the great things about it because it's a plastic, it's very easy to shape and to work with. The problem is once you finish shaping it, how are you going to get it back like new? with that perfect mirror clarity, you know, transparency, no scratches, and that's what this guide is going to be all about. What I have here is a custom Singularity Computers Reservoir. A customer came to me with this design actually a long time ago now, and originally, well, I had it CAD drawn, and then we were going to build it on our lathe and mill in my workshop. But after what happened with the workshop, I couldn't do that. So I started looking for somebody to build it. And that's when I started to realize how incredibly difficult it is to get anything built, mainly in Australia. In Australia, you cannot get one simple, tiny thing built at all. And the best quote I could get for this reservoir was $5,000. It took me months of searching through every company in this country to find somebody just to give me that quote. So after that, I started looking elsewhere around the world. And at that point, I had an agent actually traveling, well, so far to the USA, Japan, Taiwan, and China. And I started looking all over the world. And eventually, I, I found somebody, which I was obviously very happy about. Now, this reservoir was supposed to come polished, and it did, but I wasn't happy with the polish. There was still a lot of gouges and scratches on it. So I am repolishing it. And you can see that I've already started sanding here. That's why some of it is dull. But, you know, this is quite a complex component and an amazing part. Now, you can see that it's a big reservoir. I'm pretty sure it's about two, eight, or 300 by, by 200 by about 80 mil, including the base which sits on there like that with the o-ring in between bolted on has two inlets and outlets and the fill port on the top but really the most complex part of this component is this curve around the front and it's a curve going both ways as you can see so absolutely beautiful once it's properly polished it's going to look truly amazing and I can't wait to see it in the customers build which is actually a desk build but we'll take a proper look at it once it's finished once I've finished polishing it but I'm not sure if you can see the the gouges on camera and the scratches but there is a lot here to be done but first of all let's take a look at what you are going to need as always I'll put links in the video description to all of this so first of all sandpaper and where you need to start with sandpaper is going to, to depend on what you've been doing so with something like this it's already quite smooth you probably start at about 600 or 800 grit and then go through with, you know, not too big gaps between the grits. So I'll talk about the gaps between the grits in a sec. But, you know, if you've been filing or rasping something and it's really rough, well, then you start at, you know, maybe 240. You go 240, 320, 400, 600, 800, you know, right through. But as I said, because this is smooth, we're going to be starting at 800. Wet and dry sandpaper. I always try to wet sand as much as I can. So 800, 1200, 1500, 2000, 2500. That's what I have for sandpaper. And in combination with the sandpaper for sanding, you're going to need a small spray bottle or just any spray bottle with soapy water. So just dishwashing liquid is fine. You're going to need a couple of sanding blocks I mean depending on what you're actually sanding but for something like this I'm going to use a couple of different sizes because 
you know, for the outside here, I need a nice big sanding block, but then for the inside, something smaller. And after the sandpaper, I'm going to move on to these sponges. So I have two different types, a coarse sponge and a fine sponge. In combination with those sponges, I'm using a rotary tool, and I'll put links in the video description to a rotary air tool and an electric tool. Most of you are going to need electric, but anyone with a compressor can use air tools. Now you can actually use a just a normal drill if you get the right attachment for it. And you know that works okay. It's not really fast enough though, so and it's it's a bit difficult to use. Next up, you're going to need plastic polish. You can just use some sort of basic headlight polish, you know, for car headlights. But I'll put a link in the video description to this Novus kit, which comes with three different products, and this works great. So this is what I use most of the time. Okay, you need to be working on a soft surface. You can see I'm obviously working on carpet here, but you can just lay down a towel, anything soft that's not going to further damage the acrylic. Now what I'm going to do with this part is I'm not actually going to touch this edge, even though it has very fine milling marks on it, which I would like to, to remove. This area here requires incredible accuracy because of the o-ring track. You know, if I play around with that too much, we could end up with leaks. And also because the base and the top here are going to meet up, if I accidentally sand along any of these corners and there's any kind of dipping or waving, you're going to see it from a mile away. And that is quite difficult to avoid when doing things by hand. So I'm going to, well I've already start, started and done this area here with 800. And all I did, wherever you can, you need to use a sanding block because by hand you're a lot more likely to dig holes and make more dips and more mess. So I've used the sanding block in here as much as I can and anything I couldn't get with the sanding block I've then gone around and done by hand with a smaller piece like this. Now for acrylic it's very similar to buffing custom paint. You don't want to, it's very sensitive, you can't fold the sandpaper because the corners will dig in and scratch the acrylic. So that's why I use small pieces like this, not folded. I've then just gone all the way around, done all the corners, all the edges. So that's it, I've started with 800 grit there, and I've done the entire inside. Now I'm going to start working on the top and the outside. And for this I'm going to use the larger sanding block. I want to cover as much surface area as possible. Mainly for accuracy, but also for efficiency. So you can see it's nice and wet, eventually it'll start to work up a bit of a slurry where the material that you're taking off mixes with the water and that can actually help the sandpaper to take off a bit more of the surface, you know, to, to bite in a bit more. It's also the same with paint. So I've finished sanding the entire reservoir with 800 grit, I'm now moving up to 1200 grit. Now I'm going to do the base second separate from the reservoir and the reason I'm doing that is because the base has a pretty good polish on it which makes sense because it's just a flat piece of acrylic with a few holes drilled in it whereas the reservoir itself has been carved on a CNC machine. So this one first and then this one will probably only require 2,000, 2,500 and on from there. It really depends on you know, how badly scratched it actually is, where you need to start 
which sandpaper grit you need to start with. And you want to make sure that your sandpaper grit isn't too fine for the scratches that you're trying to deal with because then you're going to be there for a long time. You know, if you, if you start sanding and it takes a while, the scratches aren't disappearing, just drop to, down to a coarser grit because it's going to be far quicker. And the only thing you really need to be thinking about as you go through each grit is, well, what you're doing with sandpaper is obviously scratching the surface. And so I've started with the 800, and that's got rid of all of the scratches that were already on the reservoir, but the 800 is only scratching the surface again, but finer. The 1200, even finer scratches, and so on, to the point where I can actually buff the scratches out with the sponges and the acrylic polish. But what you've got to make sure of is that as you go through each grit, you sand enough to get rid of the scratches from the previous grit, because if you don't, you're not really going to know until later. Once you start polishing with the sponges and it really starts coming up like glass, you'll start to see these deeper scratches in it. And then you're going to have to go all the way back again to whatever grit those scratches are and follow through with the process again. So you're better off taking your time now and getting rid of all of the scratches properly. You know, whatever it takes, you might need to actually dry the surface and have a look at it in the light, angle it a bit so that you can see the scratches better. I've finished sanding the main part of the reservoir, so I've gone all the way through from 800 to 2500, and it's taken me about an hour and 45 minutes just to do this part of the reservoir. So that will give you an idea of the amount of time that goes in, but that's mostly due to the complex shapes here. And, you know, I am being very fussy. This is a very nice component, and I want it to be absolutely perfect. So, you know, if it was the edges of a side panel window or something, it would only take 10 minutes. But, you know, it's just this complex component I'm putting a lot of time in. So you can see I now have it on a towel, and that's just because I do a lot of work up here on this carpet, and I don't really trust it. There might be a couple of iron filings or something that's going to destroy my sanding work and mean I have to start again. So at this point, once you get back to 2500 grit, you need to be very careful, and a clean towel is you know, a, a good thing to use for this. So you can see that it's perfectly smooth now. There's none of those gouges or anything but it's still very dull and that's obviously just the very fine scratches from the 2500 and we're now going to move on to getting rid of those with the coarse sponge and the rotary tool now this is a low rpm rotary tool 2000 unlike some of the very high rpm rotary tools that you use for metal polishing this is nice low rpm designed for polishing paint and also plastics, which is basically the same process. So starting with the Novus Heavy Scratch Remover now, and the coarse sponge. So I'm going to put the coarse sponge onto the air tool, center it properly, and instead of putting the polish onto the surface of the reservoir, you put it on the sponge, and this, this technique stops the polish from being thrown around everywhere. You know, same with polishing paint, you're better off putting the polish onto the sponge and I rub it in like that, soak it right into the sponge and normally I'm wearing gloves and actually I was going to say that if you're going to be sanding for a long period of time, particularly wet sanding, your hands get very soft from obviously from the water and then you're holding sandpaper so it just takes your skin off very very easily so you should be wearing gloves when sanding, particularly wet sanding. So I'm now going to get started. I need to be very careful on the inside here because if I hit up against one of these edges, the edge of this attachment here will put huge gouges in the insides of the reservoir, which will mean huge amount of work to get rid of. So I'm just going to go slowly here.
It's now over five hours since I started and most of that time didn't go into the sanding, it went into the polishing. And you can see that the reservoir has just turned out absolutely beautiful. I'm very happy with it. It's crystal clear. Absolutely perfect. This is really how it should have come, but I certainly can't expect anybody else to put the time and effort in that I do. But you can see particularly this front piece, now that it's actually polished, just looks beautiful. You know, this is an amazing component. And I'm very, very happy with it. For something this complex, I mean, this is milled from a solid piece of acrylic with the, all of the holes that have been drilled, the threads that have been tapped, the O-ring track, all of the corners are perfect. You know, for something to have turned out this nicely that is this complex, very happy. Certainly a lot of time and a lot of effort, but definitely worth it. And I'm completely dehydrated. I've now finished polishing the entire reservoir. So you can see that I have the base here, which I've just finished polishing. Now I actually had a big problem when polishing this reservoir. It took far too long. Going through the sandpaper grits wasn't a problem. It was how it usually is when I polish acrylic. Very quick and easy. The gaps that I have between the sandpaper grits work well. The 800, 1200, 1500, 2000 and 2500. It was when I was going from the 2500 to the coarse sponge, it took far too long to remove those scratches from the 2500. And it's the same concept with the polishing attachments as it is with the sandpaper. So if it's taking too long to remove the scratches with a certain sandpaper grit, well then drop back to a coarser sandpaper grit. So I experimented with that. I tried some coarser polishing attachments. I tried a wool polishing attachment, but I didn't really like the results. And something that I've experimented with previously, and I've had a few people tell me, is that you can use metal cutting compounds to polish plastics and to polish acrylic, and that it works extremely well. So that is what I decided to do. And compared to when I polished the reservoir, polishing this using the cutting compound, polishing the base, was so much quicker and easier. So if you run into this same problem and you find that the gap between the 2500 and that coarse sponge is too great, it's taking too long, well then use a metal cutting compound. And this is actually for polishing aluminium. So, but really anything for polishing steel, whatever it is, it, it seems to work very well because I tried a, a few of them. So what I recommend, if you decide to go down this path, if you run into this problem and you want to speed things up, use the metal cutting compound with the coarse sponge and with the fine sponge, just use any plastic polish. And I just used the fine scratch remover from the Novus plastic polish kit. So that sums up this video. I hope you find this information useful and keep in mind if you like our content how important it is that you show your support by liking our videos, subscribing and also check the video description to see what else you can do to get involved in growing and improving the channel. Thanks for watching.